Hello and welcome to a continuation of our discussion on long-term capital investment decisions. This video will walk you through a complete example of how to make a long-term decision. In this example, the company is considering purchasing a machine that will produce high-quality products and allow the company to increase revenues. Take a moment to read quickly through the example. We will analyze this investment from four different perspectives. Net present value will consider all cash flows in today's dollars. The internal rate of return computes the annual return on cash flows only, and the accounting rate of return is an income statement approach that also considers depreciation expense. We will, we will determine how many years it will take the company to get the initial investment of $100,000 back. The company would like to earn 10% on the investment. The first step is to list the relevant cash flows that will change, both cash inflows and cash outflows. The next step is to use the present value tables and determine the present value factors that will be used to convert cash flows to today's dollars. Use 10 years at 10%. Set up the table with these columns. List the purchase, which is the initial investment first. This cash outflow is shown as a negative. Next, list the annual cash flows that will occur if the machine is purchased. These cash flows will occur every year for 10 years. Then list the one-time cash flow, the amount received from the sale after 10 years. A cash flow that occurs now has a present value factor of 1 because the present value today is the same amount as money spent today. Find the present value factor in the present value table for 10% in 10 years and multiply these present value factors by the amount to get the present value for each cash flow. Present value is the equivalent today in today's dollars. Net all of the cash flows to get the net present value. The total net present value does not mean the company will have 20,603 more cash flow. A positive net present value means the return on the investment is expected to be 20603 more than the required return of 10% over the 10-year period. This analysis does not give the return percent. It only determines if the investment will earn more or less than the required return. The internal rate of return is computed as the investment divided by the annual cash flows. Annual cash flows are cash flows that occur each year. The formula gives a present value factor of 5.26. This is not the percent. The percent return must be determined by using the present value table of an annuity. Go down to the row for 10 periods and across the row until you get to the number closest to 5.26. This is the 14% column. A net annual cash flow of 19000 will give a return of 14% annually on the $100,000 investment. The accounting rate of return includes depreciation expense in the net return. It considers all the items that would impact the income statement. The straight line method is used for depreciation. This formula does not compute the return on the investment. Excuse me, this formula does compute the return on the investment. The accounting rate of return is always lower than the internal rate of return because costs are higher. The payback period is computed using the same formula as the internal rate of return. It will take just over five years to get $100,000 back at a rate of $19,000 each year given a return of 0%. This analysis is important to companies that have a shortage of cash. Please log on to studymyaccounting.com and go through the practices you learned to give you examples of each of the concepts discussed in the long-term capital investment videos. Work the practice test to verify your understanding. Write the answers out and check your answers. Please write them out. It will help you really get it. And remember it. Thanks for being prepared for class.